Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ raising up Jesus believers throughout New England the nation, Canada and the world and now our pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of the Time Is Now radio and television program. My prayer and sincere hope that God will use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs. And I'm certain that God is going to do just that. So have a word that we're going to share with you today. I pray that this word blesses, edifies, encourages, and helps you in some way. This word, let me just tell you right up front, this word is really more, to me, geared towards Christians. And the thought that I had, even before, right before I came to the studio, a little while before I came to the studio, was how that, you know, if you're, if you're not a Christian, if, you, if you're not a believer, you're not saved, born again, following Jesus Christ, so maybe this word isn't for you. But it's for, it's for Christians. It's for Christians who, because of lack of knowledge, get involved with the fads and the trends and all the th things going on. Christians who maybe for lack of knowledge, you know, are saying things and, and doing things that maybe they don't realize they shouldn't be doing. And, and, and it's sad to say that a lot of Christians really don't know the Bible. They don't read the Bible. They don't study it like they should. They, they depend on people like me and their pastor and preachers and televangelists, people on TV and radio to teach them and tell them what the Word says. But you need to know what the Word of God says. You need to know it for yourself. I would encourage you, get a one-year Bible reading plan, read through the Bible, you know, over, over a period of a year, maybe about three chapters a day or so on. It's pretty simple. But you should, you should know the Bible. You should be reading all the time. But for the sake of those of you who maybe are in lack of knowledge and don't know the truth, well, God has sent me here to just make you aware of some things. In Hosea 4 and 6, God says, for my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Imagine that, people being destroyed, suffering, sick, uh, uh, broke, busted, disgusted, all because of some information, something they don't know. And, and whether it's, be, well, part of it is they haven't investigated, they haven't read, they haven't studied for themselves, and maybe the other part is they're not being fed and taught these things in their church. Well, not to put anyone down, but, you know, these are some of the things that God gives me to, to share that maybe others, maybe he's not giving them to share. So, but we're going to show you some things in just a second. But God is good all the time. Go to our YouTube channel, eiosborne.org. Uh, when you, and when you get to, when you go to YouTube, search eiosborne.org. YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, search E.I. Osborne, and uh, you'll find our channel. Thursday, we do a live Bible study on Thursday at 7 p.m., and we'd love to have you join us. But most importantly, come check us out, Deliverance Revival Tabernacle, 298 High Street in Duxbury, Massachusetts, Sunday at 10 a.m., and this is your personal invitation, okay? So let's get into this word. You know, if you're listening by radio, W-E-Z-E right now, so 4.30 on Sunday afternoon, we're on W-E-Z-E. W-E-Z is 590 on the AM dial. Uh, we're there on Sunday afternoon, and so if you're listening right now, write us, call us, let me know, 508-746-4085. Our email address is, well, let me see, you can go to the website, eiosborne.org. I would love to, to, and I need to have you write us, call us, let us know that you're listening, that you're enjoying the program. You know, otherwise we can do some other things that might be a little more productive, but we need to hear from you, and we need to hear that right away. All right, Father, thank you for this opportunity to minister to those that you've allowed to be listening and watching right now. You're an awesome God. You're good all the time. Bless this word, anoint it, use it for your glory. Father, I know, as it says in Psalms 107:20, you sent your word to heal them and to deliver them from their destruction. Someone today, because of this word, is going to be delivered from the destruction, that the, uh, the, uh, the impending coming destruction because of the, deliver the deliverance they're going to receive through this word today. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So <clears throat> I'm going to start, and I thought about this uh, I, uh, when I did the hour program. I did it a little different, but I just had this thought about 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, okay? 1 Timothy 4. Now, I believe the Bible is the Word of God, so it's not just another religious book. I believe the Bible is the Word of God uh, 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 that was given by divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So when I read something in the scripture, <clears throat> I don't take it for granted. <clears throat> I don't just take it as a thought or an idea. <clears throat> I take it as the word of God. So in the Bible, God says, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1, 
Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, and Spirit is capital Spirit, capital S. I'm sorry, so it's talking about the Holy Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times that I believe we're in right now, we're in those latter times, the last days, latter times. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And now here's the thing: it says that people are going to depart from the faith. If to depart from the faith means that you had to be part of the faith, that means that you were once part of the faith, in the faith, a follower, a believer, and so on, but you departed, you left the faith, and you started following seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, is what it says, which means some new doctrine, some new idea, some new religion, some new something came along and sounded good to somebody for some reason, and they began to follow it. Maybe, you know, in, the, in their walk with God and their faith, out of frustration, whatever it is, but, but, but the Bible says, in the last days, okay, it says uh, uh, um, um, some are going to uh, some shall depart from the faith. I pray that you're not included in that some. Okay, I hope that you're not one of the some. So maybe some, something I'm going to say to you today is going today is going to help you from being deceived or whatever into following some of these new trends and ideas and all like that. Okay. So the thing I want to tell you, show you, I'm going to start in Isaiah chapter 42. Uh, in Isaiah 42, and, and I know, I believe I've said some of this before, but for whatever the reason, God still isn't done with it. He has me saying it again, okay? So I'm going to start in Isaiah 42 and verse 5, okay? So Isaiah 42 and verse 5, thus saith God the Lord. So he is God the Lord, okay? He is God the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah or, or Yahweh. He is God the Lord. That's some of his names. You know, in the scripture, in the Bible, God has different names. In, 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 in uh, Exodus 15, 26, he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's when he revealed himself to the children of Israel as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, our healer. He revealed himself to, to Abraham in Genesis 22 as Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. And Abraham named the, called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider, you know, uh, 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 um, and so on. So, but, but there are certain names that God does not identify by. There are certain names that are not, that God does not use, okay? So he says, thus saith God, the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. So he says, I'm, the, I'm God, I'm the Lord, I created all this. Okay, he created everything that we see and know and consider and understand. Everything in this universe, God says he is the creator of it. He spread forth the earth, and it says, and, and, and everything that comes out of it, and he also gave breath to, to the people that are upon it. So Genesis chapter 2 tells us that he formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul or a speaking spirit. God, he did all that. He said, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, he says, that is my name. I am the Lord, that is my name. You know, when Moses, when he was sending Moses to, to deliver the children of Israel from their 430 years of bondage to Pharaoh, before that, Moses had to go speak to the elders and so on. And he said, who should I tell them sent me? And he said, tell them, I am. I am that I am. So God has names, but there are certain names that God does not identify with or use and so on. Okay? So he says, he says, I am the Lord. That's my name. So if you want to know what to call him, call him the Lord. And he says, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Right? So today, which, which, which seems to be very popular and sad to say, even amongst Christians, is this idea of calling God or referring to God as the universe. And, and I don't know, you know, some people, they want to fit in. It's the trend. It's the, it's the new thing. People call it. But you have to realize, because people are saying the universe, all right, it doesn't mean, well, see, they must not be atheists and they're not, because they believe in God. Because a person calls, says the universe, does not believe, mean they believe in God. It definitely does not mean that they believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They believe in something as God, all right? Actually, the universe is God, but they don't believe in, the, in God as we believe, the creator of the universe and all we see, no concern, and understand. And the sad thing is to see someone who, who pretty much, who, who identifying as a Christian and saved and a believer, a believer in Jesus Christ and all like that, 
to stand on stage and receive an award or get an, be in an interview and sit there and talk about the universe. Maybe because they're trying to fit in, they're compromising, they don't want to offend anyone or whatever, so they're going to talk about the universe, you know? And, and it's sad. You know, there's a person that uh, uh, was following on, on Facebook and friends or how all that kind of stuff on social media, and they seem to be a Christian. They post all these scriptures and things about God and testifying about the goodness of God and all like that. And all of a sudden, you know, in their post, they started posting some foolishness about the universe. You know, and the universe sent me to tell me to tell you this, and the universe told me to tell you that. Well, you know, either, either it's God, okay, or it's the universe, but it's not both. And see, people think, well, it's just another name for God. It's just another way of referring to God. You have to realize that it's, it's not that, all right? And, and when you talk about the universe, and the universe sent this message, and the universe did this for me and did that for me or whatever, you are giving the universe glory. You're giving the universe praise. And God says, I'm the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. You have then made the universe an idol, and you are now into idolatry, okay? The universe sent this message. The universe spoke to me. The universe helped me. And yeah, oh, that, that sounds cute, and it fits in, and it's the new trend, new fad, and it's not offending anyone by calling. Well, you know, people need to know who the God you serve is. And if it offends them, well, you know, it offends them. But they need to know. You, you need to be giving credit, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, giving credit to God. And he says, I'm the Lord. That's my name, my glory. So by, by saying the universe sent this message, the universe helped me, the universe strengthened me, the universe, you are giving the universe glory and praise, and you are into idolatry, and God says he's not sharing his glory with the universe, okay? Uh, the other thing is that maybe you realize or do, don't realize is that there are people that follow this universe thing that actually, you know, let me see, I want to read it to you. It's actually a religion. It's actually called pantheism. So, you know, there's so many, there's a lot of believers, they don't know so many things, they just, you know, some people know, some people don't, but they're not aware that this is actually a thing, pantheism. So when people talk about the universe, they're not, they're not always referring to God. You might think, oh, well, they're just talking about God, they're just calling him another name. Well, it's not one of his names. It's not my God's name. It's not how he refers to, he says, I'm the Lord, that's my name. And so pantheism is the view that God, listen to this, because see, when you go, you, maybe you're that person that God sent this word for, and you've been going along with this trend and this idea that it's just another name for God, and you know, and so on, and you think it's cute, and you want to fit in, and you're going to post some, something online about the universe sent, said something, and the universe helped you, and the universe did that for you. You're into idolatry, and all idolaters are going to face the judgment one day. Listen, pantheism is the view that God is everything and everyone and that everyone and everything is God. That's what pantheism is. The universe, okay? That, that universe idea is pantheism. It is the view that God is everything and everyone, God is everything and everyone, and that everyone and everything is God. Pantheism is similar to polytheism because polytheism is the belief in many gods. Well, if you believe the tree is God and the sun is God and the dog is God and my, my coat is God, whatever, well, that's many gods. So it's similar to uh, uh, um, poly, poly is polytheism, the belief in many gods, but it goes beyond polytheism to teach that everything is God. Polytheism, everything is God. Everything in the universe is God. The sun is God, the moon is God, the clouds are God, the tree is God, the grass is God, the dirt is God. Okay, everything is God. And it says it, a tree is God, a rock is God, an animal is God, the sky is God, the sun is God. You're God, I'm God, we're all God. Pantheism is the supposition behind many cults and false religions, uh, and, it, and it mentions some of them, various different various religions and so on. Uh, 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 and people, even people that worship Mother Nature, you know, we have an Earth Day and a this and all that. That's that's part of pantheism. Earth Day, get, get making an idol out of the earth, and 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 one of the things that that possibly caused people to follow this idea is the I, because of the 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 idea or the uh, uh, understanding that God is omnipresent. Well, yes, God is a spirit. He's all and everywhere present. But it's not because he's the, he's the tree and the, and the grass and like that. God is the creator of all these things, but he is not these, those things, all right? He says he created all that. In verse 5, thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. You know, he, he is the one that created all these things. And you know what's interesting is in Luke chapter 19, Jesus said, you know, on, on what we call his triumphal entry, 
as they were worshiping and, and, and praising and thanking God for him and all like that, and the, and, the, and the religious scribes and Pharisees were a little upset about it and wanted, didn't want, him to, they want them to bless him. So in verse 37, and when he was come nigh, Luke 19, verse, 30, verse 37, even now at the, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to work, rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke your disciples. Don't let them praise God. Don't let them worship you and praise like that. You know, don't let them do that. And he answered, Jesus answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, if they stop praising, if people stop praising, if we stop praising, if I stop praising them, he said, if they should hold their peace, all right, he said, the stones would cry out immediately. If we don't praise God, you know what will happen? Creation will praise God. I believe it's in Psalms 19. It says the heavens uh, uh, declare the glory of God. So all the things, the rocks and the trees and the crystals and the whatever, that people in the sun, the moon, the stars, all the things that God created, okay, that people are worshiping and making idols of, Jesus says if we human beings that were created, everything was created for his pleasure, if we don't praise him, he said his creation will cry out and praise him. So the very thing you're worshiping and idolizing like that, if, we, if you don't praise God, it would praise God, okay? So you, why, why worship and praise and, and idolize the creation when you can worship the creator, okay? Because he is the creator he, he, uh, 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 of all things and so on, okay? And if you think, well, you know, if you don't realize that this isn't necessarily something new because in Romans chapter 1, God talks about, you know, you think about uh, after, after God delivered the children of Israel from their 430 years of bondage and all the, the things that they saw, the 10 plagues, the water from a rock, man from heaven, uh, 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 the Red Sea parting, all the things that God did. Old Testament, where God came down on the mount and spoke to Moses in an audible voice. It was so overwhelming. The people pretty much said, you know, Moses, we don't want to deal with that anymore. From now on, you go speak to God and come back and tell us, you know, what he said and so on. But, but with all the things that the people experienced, you know, they still wanted to, came out, of, came out of Egypt, and when Moses went up to the mountain, he didn't come back for a while, they said, make us a god. Gave him their golden earrings, and, and he made this calf and said, all right, not just making the calf, but then said, this is the god that brought you out of Egypt. Imagine that. So, you know, so with all that people saw and see and see even today, they still want to wanna, wanna worship uh, uh, an idol and make idols like that. So if we go to um, verse 20 of Romans chapter 1, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You know, you can see the handiwork, the hand of God in creation because, you know, the things that we see in the universe, in creation, it is impossible for them to have created themselves. I like to take a pen, and what I tell you, what I say is this, it is impossible for this pen you think of evolution and Big Bang like that, this pen could not have cre created itself. Even if I take it apart, put all the pieces in a box, and I shake it for billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and millions and, and, and quadrillions and octillions and sectillions of years, whatever, it is impossible. Even though the parts are, doesn't have to form any of the parts, make any of the parts, doesn't have to, you know, and all like that. No, the parts are all there. All it has to do in these billions of years is just come together, form a pen, and make it that it works. It is impossible. OK, and in the same way, it's impossible for, for this pen to have made itself these bodies of ours, this hand, all the ligaments, tendons, joints that it takes that God put in there to be able my hands to be able to move like they do. My eyes, your eyes, in order for your eyes to see the complicated eye, it, as much as as complicated as that is for it to have created itself, it's impossible. OK. And so why would I worship the creation as, as opposed to worshiping the Creator. But that's what they did. So in Romans chapter 1, it says here, verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You see the handiwork that, and so on of God and everything in, in his creation being understood by the things that are made, you know, and you see it through the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. If you wake up in the morning and you see the sunrise, you see the sun and the, the moon, the clouds and so on, you see all of God's creation, there's no excuse. And when you think about, he's talking about the children of Israel and, and people, you know, in the Bible days who saw not just creation, but the miracles. 
And people, I tell you what, you know, you think about people who are involved with the occult and all like that, and you would think they'd be less inclined to believe in a God because they're already involved with the occult. Well, those are the people that are, should be more inclined. Those are the people that really understand there's a God because they have supernatural experiences. If you've never had a, a supernatural, spiritual type of experience, well, you might be able to uh, uh, have an argument that there is no God. But people that are involved with the occult that have had supernatural type experiences, you know, with demons and all like that, there's no doubt in their mind that there's another realm to this world, that there's a spiritual realm, and that there's a God, okay? They're just choosing not to follow it. Now, God is healing someone right about this area right here. I don't know if it's a muscle spasm, maybe you pulled something, maybe it's a blocked artery. Well, whatever it is, God is healing you right now in Jesus' name, okay? Look for it, try to find it, see if it, I guarantee it's never going to come back. So now, it says, because that when they knew God, see, they knew God. This isn't so much just about people, they don't know God, atheist, agnostic, have no idea of God, and all like that. But children of Israel and people, even today, they know God. Because that when they knew God, here's what they did, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. So they wanted to worship idols, and so God gave them up to let them do those things. All right? When they wanted to follow these idols and do different things, God gave them up to do that. But I pray today that through this word, Lord, anoint it and just use it for your glory and to bring uh, uh, revelation and understanding to people listening and watching right now. The understanding and revelation that you are God, that you are real, that, to, that you are the creator of all we see, know, consider, and understand. And, and that you are the only God that we should worship. And I tell you, I'll close with this right here in Revelation chapter 8, because, you know, if you're into idolatry and you think it's okay and you're worshiping idols and the sun and the moon and the universe and crystals and all these different things, you know what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 8? Revelation, let me see. I'm sorry. Revelation 21. I'm in the wrong chapter. Revelation 21 and verse 8. Listen to what this says. It says, And the fearful... And the unbelieving, fearful because fear is not so much a sin, but it's that when people are in fear, they don't obey God, and that disobedience is sin. Fear, and they disobey God, disobedience is sin, now you have a problem. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. So those are the, these are the people that, Revelation 21 and 8, fearful, unbelieving, abominable, they're into abominations and all like that, murderers and whoremongers, sorcerers, people into the occult, witches and sorcerers and like that, listen, and idolaters, anyone making an idol out of anything other than God worshiping it is an idolatry. Here's what it says, and all liars, this is what it says about them, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which in the Bible calls it the second death, which is the second death. So, if you don't know Jesus, maybe this word is for you today. Maybe you've been involved with these things. Maybe you believe in the universe and you think everything is God and all like that. But somehow, you know, because you grew up in church, you went to Sunday school, you know the truth, you know better, and, and you're realizing today that you need to repent and ask God to forgive you, then say this prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe Jesus is your only begotten son. I believe he came. I believe he died. I believe you raised him on the third day, and I believe he's coming back again. So I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Ghost with a manifestation of all the gifts and the fruit of the spirit. I thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, I've got good news. You're saved. You're born again. You're on your way to heaven. And I tell you what, I would love to see you in time, but if I don't see you in time, I'll see you in eternity. Let me just close and remind you. Oh, i got to pray. Father, I pray for people sick, suffering, and afflicted. Whatever the condition, whatever the issue, Lord, the person that's dealing with arthritis in their hands, and maybe right now your hands are inflamed and swollen and stiff and sore and painful, right now, even before you take that medication, you're about to go for your medication as soon as we go off, well, before you take that medication, right now, God is healing you right now. The healing virtue, I release the healing virtue. I release healing into your hands right now. I release the finished work of Jesus. I release it to you right now. I release that resurrection power of the Holy Spirit into your hands right now. I release it. 
and I, and, and I call you healed, whole, and well. Every pain, the swelling, every symptom is gone now in Jesus' name. And whatever the sickness, weakness, disease, or malady, I call you healed, whole, and well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right? So God is good all the time. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully we'll see you next Sunday in church or soon. Uh, all right? But definitely join us again. Write us. Call us. Let us know what God is doing for you. We'd love to hear from you. We need to hear from you today. Okay? Let me just close by reminding you, Jesus Christ came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. So stop dying and live, live, live. Thank you for tuning in to The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like some information on anything you heard in today's episode or to find out how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please call us at 508-746-4085. If you would like a copy of this message, further information about our ministry, or to make a donation, please visit our website at www.eiosborne.org or correspond by mail at The Time Is Now, P.O. Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02361. On behalf of the ministry, thank you. 